Welcome back troglodytes to the Troglies Guitar Show. Today we have a 2006 Gibson Vegas Standard. Now it wasn't too long ago that I reviewed the flashier version of this one called the High Roller. Basically these had neon finishes and were really exotic looking. They have your regular F holes and they have beautiful flamed and or quilted tops in exotic finishes. We're talking green, purple, and then a red and kind of orangish color. They are quite visually striking guitars, and they're great for someone that wants something a little bit different. However, the Vegas Standard, which is this one, offers a little bit more of a classier vibe to a guitar. These ones just scream class. The other ones scream flash. So I think it's definitely worth having one of these for your jazz gigs and then having a high roller for your rock and roll gigs because they really are stunning guitars. Now I'll put a link to that old video and in that one I say this is my all time favorite color. The next one of these that I see I wanted to buy and I did exactly that. I've been looking for this guitar for a while now, and I saw it show up on Reverb. I think it was kind of late in the day, late at night, and I had made an offer on it. And honestly, it was a pretty strong offer considering I buy these for review and then resale purposes. But it was for sale by another dealer. However, someone else had also made an offer. Now the seller didn't get back to either of us until early the next morning. He had sent a counter offer that was like 50 or 100 bucks more than I had offered. And I wasn't awake yet, so somebody else had purchased this guitar. So I was like, dang it! This is my absolute favorite finish, and I missed it by that much. So I was a little bit sad by that, but I noticed the seller still had this listed on eBay. Now I know personally from listing things on multiple sites, sometimes you don't get things pulled off right away, but I waited until the next morning and this thing was still listed. So that either meant the other person had not paid yet or they decided to back out of the sale, but it still wasn't relisted on Reverb. So curiosity got the best out of me in this situation. I was like, hmm, I wonder what would happen if I buy it on eBay for the full asking price. So there were two things that could happen with this. The seller could decide to snuff the other buyer and sell it to me since I offered and paid a little bit more on eBay. Or what I thought was likely going to happen, my order was just gonna get canceled. Sorry, we already sold the guitar. Now it took two days, I had heard nothing from the seller, and then I finally got the notification of this guitar being shipped. So I was like, hooray, I get this awesome, beautiful guitar that is incredibly hard to find. It's the only one of these guitars that has the correct teardrop shape. But at the same time, I was like, oh, I feel bad for whoever I stole this guitar from. However, if you can send me a screenshot of your canceled order from this dealer, I will make a fantastic deal on this guitar for you. It's not my intentions to steal guitars. It's just curiosity got the best out of me. So, so let's discuss this really quickly. If this happened to me, I sold the guitar on Reverb and then somebody also bought it on eBay at the same time. And let's just say it's at the exact same price. There is no difference. From a seller standpoint, I fear eBay a lot more. I would say feedback is a little more important on eBay because as soon as you get your first negative feedback, your percentage goes down dramatically. So eBay buyers can be a little bit meh, not so nice, especially if they're new. So back to this situation, it's a lot easier to cancel a reverb order. So I kind of understand why the vendor decided to go with my eBay purchase. Because I could have left a negative feedback, but I wouldn't have. It would have been a haha, okay. I was just really curious if I would end up getting this guitar or not. So again, if you can show me your screenshotted canceled order, I'll make you a really sweet deal on this guitar. Otherwise, you're going to have to pay my price because this thing is fantastic. It is the most beautiful Vegas out of all of them, in my opinion. I think this thing just looks so classy. I really do like this version better than the high rollers. This guitar is basically a tribute to the Trini Lopez model. The Trini Lopez is a late 60s guitar. 
It's kind of like a 335, but you have these diamond shaped F holes and you also have a Firebird-esque headstock shape. The Trini Lopez model also has these split diamond inlays. So this guitar pretty much is what I consider the baby Trini Lopez model. And Dave Grohl of the Foo Fighters has really made those Trini Lopez models popular. So these are like the next best thing if you can't afford the real deal. But honestly, these have their own cool characteristics about them that you could own both. You have two 57 classic humbuckers. You have your general Nashville style bridge and tailpiece. You have a master volume and a master tone. Again, you have your diamond shaped F holes, the Firebird-esque headstock with pearl tipped tuners, two piece maple top, mahogany back and neck with an ebony fretboard and get this, gold frets. Now both the standard and the high roller version of this guitar have these gold frets. I'm not a huge fan of the gold frets. I just think it makes your frets look rusty, but I think it was kind of cool for Gibson to toy with that. However, I actually ended up buying two of these standard models. I like to document one of each color, and this one showed up after I had purchased that natural one. So we will have a natural one on the channel. I'll try to space it out though, so we don't have back-to-back -back videos of these. But that natural one did not have gold frets. I think they might have thought it was going to clash with the finish or something, but besides that, I think all the other ones did get the gold frets. But the standard offered six finishes. There was a cherry color, wine red, black, which I think is my second favorite to this tobacco sunburst, this tobacco sunburst, and then there's another one called vintage sunburst, and then of course natural. Now all those colors, including the high rollers, were all on a rim burst. They had finish here. This tobacco sunburst is the only one that has the traditional teardrop shape that I think really makes this guitar look super special. Now I'm here to tell you, if you get really close, you can see that this one is also a rim burst. But for the most part, you really don't see this small, lighter colored area. It definitely appears to be a teardrop. So overall, if you can find one of these, I really do think they are special guitars. This is obviously my favorite finish out of the whole series, but really even that natural one I have is a nice player. They have a nice acoustic ringingness to them. And they just have a very nice simple control layout. Definitely check one of these out if you ever see one. Let's hear how this one sounds. This one weighs 6 pounds, 12.3 ounces, 
and features a 60 slim neck profile. Now that we know how this one sounds, let's take a look at its condition. There are very few people out there that would have any issues with the condition of this guitar. You have a few light scuffs, like right here, but I honestly think these are just manufacturing flaws. They just look like very tiny little dings. But for the most part, just some very light string change wear, but not a lot. The neck is nice and straight and adjustable, truss rod works just fine, and the ebony fretboard's in good shape. Your frets do show some very minor wear, but nothing you're gonna have to worry about for a good long time yet. This guitar plays fantastic up and down the fretboard. Now from far away, this looks really clean, but let's get it in the light here and you can see some picking scratches and just some average polishing marks. If you went and got the finish buffed, I'm sure this thing would look brand new. It's not too far off from it right now, but it does have some very light wear and tear. So it's been lightly played, not necessarily collector owned, but definitely still appreciated. So where it's not completely trashed up. And this is exactly what I wanted to find. One of these, a nice clean original shape and in my favorite finish that was offered. Back of the headstock, you do have some light impressions right here. I'm guessing there was a clip-on tuner left for a while. I don't know if that really reacted to the finish or not. I didn't try cleaning that, but just kind of plan on that being there. You can also see there's some of that along the sides as well. So you've got a little bit of a finish wear or something up here. But besides that and a few minor marks around the headstock, you're in good shape. Serial number is 007660556. No breaks, cracks, or repairs on this one. Really, your neck is in awesome shape as well. You do have binding on this model along the fretboard as well as along the body. And no, this isn't a heel repair. For whatever reason, Gibson does this with some tobacco bursts. They started doing this, I believe, in the late 80s, but it's very prevalent on like 90s customs. This way you know you're looking at a tobacco burst from the back instead of just a pure natural guitar because you have this dark bit. Now this back is gorgeous. You've got some decent figuring, a little bit of flame in here. It looks to me like a two-piece body. You can kind of see the center seam right here, but you've got some nice light dancing to it. It's nothing overly extravagant, but it's something to definitely be happy that is there. This was one of those selling features for this guitar for me that I thought, well, that's a really nice example. I'm gonna go for it. Your back plates do still have the plastic over them. And right here, this is the only blemish I really see on the guitar. There's a scratch line right there. It's not too bad, but definitely present. But overall, no giant patches of buckle wear. You've got a few small scuffs, a few light scratches, but I don't think anybody would really be ashamed to own this guitar in this condition. I would say it's very close to a collector grade version of this finish. I think it'd be cool to own one of every color because this is definitely a model I believe that will continue to appreciate in value, especially now that I've kind of made some of these videos and people who didn't know these things existed now do. All right, black light test. It's hard to believe 2006 was 12 years ago. It glows a little bit, but since it hasn't seen a lot of sunlight, you're not gonna see a lot of anything but it is glowing the way I would expect it to be, being from 2006. You also have a very tiny little bit of glow here on the headstock. Back of the guitar is also glowing the way I would expect it to be, but definitely no areas of concern here. You can see that area is original, no breaks, cracks, or repairs to this neck, and no really worn off finish areas either. Everything's looking good. This guitar does come with its original rectangle case, now, I usually hate these rectangle cases because they're so large, but this one, if you watch that other video, it is very comparable in size to a Les Paul case. It's just, well, a rectangle. This one has two traditional latches and a locking combo lock that has not been set yet, a Gibson USA logo with Made in Canada sticker, and you've just got some light scuffs mainly right there by the logo. For the most part, this case is in good shape. The interior is a very dark gray kind of charcoal color. And really there's nothing to note on this case. I do like their style of handle on these. They're very comfortable. 
and you do have a little compartment here where the owner's manual and the warranty registration card is. If you think you might be interested in owning this 2006 Vegas Standard in the very desirable tobacco sunburst finish, feel free to contact me on my Facebook page, facebook.com slash troglys, T-R-O-G-L-Y-S. Thank you troglodytes for watching, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.